Well, folks, applications are down across the board. We're seeing it everywhere. This is a really unique time in history, obviously. And this is one of those negative factors. So what are we doing about it? What are you guys doing about it? It's cyclical, right? Applicant flow, unemployment, economies, they're all cyclical. And so we've been here before. It is an ever-changing environment. You cannot just post and wait for people to apply right now. This is very similar to the late 90s. You have to go to where people are and bring those applicants in. So you're going to have to overcome some objections, right? If somebody walked up to you and tried to say, hey, I have a great opportunity. What's most important to you right now? Well, why should I even listen to you, right? I already have a position. I'm employed. Unemployment is low. Why would I listen to you? Mm -hmm. Well, I can pay you more money. Okay, that's going to get you people that are hungry for money. That may not be what you want. I have a mission that is important to you. And so you could go with that and start leading with, hey, I know what's valuable to you and I have that, we offer that. You could go with better flexible hours. You could go with all kinds of different things. But the main thing is you have to understand what are the objections you're gonna have to overcome and then you have to overcome those. You cannot just post and wait for people to come. There are multiple ways to source candidates. Yeah, well, let's talk about that. What are we doing? to attract viable candidates. Yeah, absolutely. So we for, we have our applicant tracking system, and that's um, where we're posting our position out on our careers page for people that know about us to be able to come and apply for roles. We also have a candidate rela relationship management tool called a CRM, and this gives us an opportunity to go once we source, as Armando just said, and bring someone into our system. We're able to connect with them via emails, have a continued email campaign journey. We also rely on our referrals. So we have a large number of referrals um, here at Ramsey. And then um, one of the things that I love teaching our recruiters to go out to do is to look at candidates that are had applied in the past. So we have 100,000 applications or applicants in our system. And we oftentimes go back and we'll start looking for people that have applied in the past and re-engage them. Hey, you applied for a position and we now have a position that matches your skill set or their skill set has grown. We rejected them for skill set back then, but now looking at LinkedIn, they have the skills that are needed for that position. They applied to us for a reason in the past. One of the questions that we ask on our application is, hey, what do you know about us? The number of stories that we hear of life change and how our products impacted them, their family, those are the people that we want to reach out to because they applied to us because they want to be a part of our mission. They may not have had the skills then. I love saying not now now does not mean not ever. We have so many team members here that applied in the past, but it wasn't the right time for them. It wasn't the right role. We take our time in the interview process to ensure that it's the right role, the right team, the right time. And so again, multiple different ways, again, posting and also going out and finding the right applicants. You had a great candidate that you sourced. Mm. Mm -hmm. Talk about yeah. him. Yeah, so Tyler had applied about two years prior. And then I found him in inside of our applicant tracking system, reached out to him, just said, hey, I saw that you had applied for a position in the past. Would you be open to having conversations? The email response that I received back from him, he was like, absolutely, it's a great time. I was just talking to my wife about possibly moving from California, and he's now, again, just re-engaged him from the past. There's also sometimes where popping in, inside of somebody's LinkedIn because I, made, I saw something on their LinkedIn profile about connecting with our, our products, whether they became debt-free or knew about Financial Peace University or were an FPU coordinator, reached out to them on their LinkedIn, responded, and of course say, how did you find me? Yeah, that's relevant. I, I, we, we have special, I'm a recruiter. yeah, yeah, we have special sources and ways, but um, yeah, we use many different ways to be able to find qualified yeah. and the right applicant for a role. I love being able to talk about having our mission and the impact that it has, mm -hmm. being able to serve people outside these walls. And so it's really important, make people want to apply. Talk about what your company does and why it's important. And if you don't know that, you need to get really clear on that. But create the environment where you want people to apply mm -hmm. to come change lives and who knows, maybe they'll change their life too. And when you're reaching out to those applicants, Armando G, you just mentioned, know what objections you're trying to overcome starting the conversation with, hey, tell me what's important to you in your next role, because I want to know, is it benefits? 
Is it, is it salary? Is it that they want to be closer to family? What is it that would drive them and make them leave their current company to come here? And then also be very clear about what it looks like to work here. Our recruiters truly paint a picture, share what it's like working on a specific team or working here at Ramsey, the things that we do. You mentioned staff meeting. So just all the different things that we do here as a company and sharing that clear picture with them. So Ken, I'm not sure this audience or what they do. I spent the bulk of my career in the restaurant industry. And so from high-end restaurants to family dining and everything in between. So we were having a hard time hiring chefs. And we thought, okay, what's the most creative thing we could do to mm. find chefs? Well, what if we did a best of contest at our restaurant and it opened it up to every chef and said, hey, everybody submit your plate, right? We're going to have a date. We're going to do this big contest. There's $5,000. All these chefs across the town showed up. And guess who the keynote speaker was for that? It was the president of that concept talking about how important chefs were to that organization and how they were part owners. If you come in and be a chef here, you actually are a part owner of the, of the concept. And it wasn't a recruiting. It wasn't you ought to come here. It was just him expressing his heart and how he felt about food, how he felt about the heart of the house. Mm. About three weeks later, we had applicants from that event. Wow, I love that. And I want to go back to something that you said, Aisha, this idea of finding out what do they want. It's really important that I think that HR leaders understand the concept of I can't offer a bigger check in some cases. And that's always going to be base level. Okay, I like that. That just feels good. It gives you the dopamine rush. It's better for you in multiple ways. I get to brag about it to my wife, my loved ones. It is more actual money. But you've got to go above and beyond that check. And I will tell you, it's very important that people feel a sense of mission, that they feel, you said this, that they're a part of something that's bigger than them. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, this is good pride. This is a level of dignity where they go, I'm excited to be a part of this thing. So giving people a an opportunity to be a part of something that is really community driven, I think is really, really important. It, that's that extra piece above and beyond the paycheck. And then the other thing that I would also say is, is, is if you can speak to the individuality, and you touched on this, like this role is not a job. You are a part of a, of a bigger mission, but this is how you can make your unique contribution. And, and that's what every human being craves. I love that you took money off the table right off the get-go, right? Yeah. You said, all right, money is, you're going to pay more money or whatever, right. but money is off the table. Yeah. So people can make a move for money, but that's not really the prime motivator. And it's not necessarily, it's not a negative, but it's not, it's not the people that you want sometimes, right? So you took money off the table and then you said, what about mission, being a part of something bigger? And then you tied it to the individual, which Aisha was talking about, that department, your contribution on that team, how you would fit into this team, which then fits into that department, which then is a part of a bigger, Mm -hmm. broader mission, right? And so those things are all critical. But what's important to them, right? So there's this concept. There's this value proposition. I hate the terminology because it applies. It implies that we might be taking advantage of them and we're not, but we know who we are. Before you go out to hire, you've got to know what your company is, who they are, what do we, what do we represent in the marketplace? And you have to know, I could never work for companies that I don't believe in the product, right? And so recruiting is a little bit of sales, right? Only it's the biggest sale that you will ever do. You're asking someone to sometimes change careers, potentially leave the town they grew up in, leave their friends, leave their family members, and move into a different place. It's a huge commitment, right? So you have to believe in the company you work for. You have to believe in that mission. So what is the value proposition for that company? What is it that we are different than other companies? And if you understand that and understand it very clearly, you can speed up your recruitment process because people will self-select. If you if you are actually writing your ads in such a way that it says, this is exactly who we are, not who we want to be, mind you. Mm-hmm. This is not an aspirational thing. This is who we are. This is what you're going to walk into. 
And if you can write those ads in such a way and interview in such a way that clarifies that for a candidate, you will not waste their time or your time. They will opt out. They will say, that is not who I am. That is not for me. Likewise, you will do the opposite. You will get people more energized and more passionate about what you are that they're going to just say, I want in. I want to be part of this mission. I want to be part of this company. And they're going to buy in and make a difference. We're not looking to fill a seat with a warm body. If we wanted to do that, that's easy. We want someone that's going to contribute, someone that's going to make a difference. That's who we're looking for. The clearer we are on what that is, the better off we'll be. So we've heard really good strategies, but also I think some good philosophies to help you really win in a tough game. It's very competitive out there. Recruiting is tough, but we believe you're tougher and we're here to walk with you. If you want to get more great tips and strategies to help you recruit the talent you need, go to smartdollar.com. We'll see you there.